Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about first consultation on telemedicine. I am Dr. Suresh Padadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, Head of Telemedicine Center, Head of Forensic Psychiatry Unit, working at Nimans, Bangalore. This presentation is based on Telemedicine Practice Guideline, which was released on 25th March 2020 by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Board of Governors, in partnership with Niti Aayog. Although this guideline is a part of Appendix 5 of Indian Medical Council Act under the Professional Conduct, Etiquettes and Ethics Regulation 2002, it is also part of National Medical Commission Act 2019. Until there is a new regulation is drafted under NMC Act, this guideline continues to be the legal document for telemedicine practice guideline. Before I start my presentation, I would like to have a disclaimer. This presentation is for academic and training purpose only. This is not for legal opinion. If you want to have a legal opinion, please do contact an advocate. We also request you kindly visit website of Indian Medical Council or National Medical Commission to know whether there are any amendments or any updates on this guideline. We also request you kindly to look into the original document of telemedicine practice guideline. With this, let's start to understand what is first consultation under telemedicine. So let's consider a scenario. What to do when a patient initiates a telemedicine consultation for the first time? As per telemedicine practice guideline, first consultation means if the patient is consulting a doctor for the first time, it is specific to a patient and a doctor. It should be first time or the patient had consulted with the doctor more than six months back. Then also it is considered as first consult or if the patient has consulted recently to that specific doctor for a different health condition, then also it is considered as first consult. For example, if the patient has consulted around one month back for diarrhea, now he is consulting for hypertension. These are two different health conditions. Then also it is considered as first consult. So what are the possible mode of consultation, especially in telemedicine? Telemedicine practice guideline recognizes three types of consultation, audio, video and text. The text, text means email and messages. Audio is phone call. Video may be either social media based video consultation or else telemedicine application based video consultation. It can be time, either it may be at the same time that is synchronous or also called as live or else asynchronous that is stored and forward. That is basically a CT scan is taken by a patient and it is sent to the doctor for evaluation. The doctor will take time and then he will report back that is stored and forward. It is asynchronous. It is not live. Usually, Majority of the telemedicine consultation is mixed method, it is both synchronous and asynchronous. For example, patient will request for telemedicine consultation by an email or by an SMS or through a telemedicine application. That means he has placed the doctor will take time to respond and he will give an he will give a date of appointment and also a specific time. Then on that specific time and date, the tele video consultation takes place. Later, the doctor will transmit the e-prescription. So, it's combination of both live and asynchronous method is used. Hence, majority of the consultation, especially telemedicine, is mixed method. What is the process of first consultation? Let's understand about that. Patient initiates the telemedicine consultation by sending a text audio or video that is by either an SMS, email or by a phone call or by a video call. As soon as he consults, initiate this contact is considered as implied consent. There is no need for any extra consultation. Immediately, the doctor will give an appointment. At the same time, he will identify the patient. Identifying occurs by asking the patient to produce some personal IDs or government generated photo IDs. Once the identification is done, the doctor will make a quick assessment of emergency. And if there is an emergency, the doctor will give 
first aid advice counseling and a referral for in person consultation at the earliest if there is no emergency the doctor will continue with the assessment it may be detailed assessment along with the investigation during this process if the doctor comes to know the patient requires emergency care immediately he will be referred to the in person care if there is no emergency the assessment and investigation process takes place now the question is how does the investigation takes place under telemedicine once the history has been taken the doctor feels the patient requires general physical examination or investigation in such a scenario the doctor will give a prescription of investigation or a battery of tests to be done and he will close the telemedicine consultation by giving an appointment and a date similarly if the patient requires physical examination the doctor either will he will call him for in person consultation or else he will refer to another doctor for general physical examination and a prescription will be given for what physical examination is required and the documentation is done once the patient car finishes his investigation or general physical examination when he comes back it is not considered as a second consultation or a follow up consultation it is still considered as first consultation only but however it will be considered as two separate consultation the charges will be given as per the duration time taken for the consultation again once the patient brings all the investigation the doctor will give an appointment on the specific date and the consultation continues the management of the first consultation as one is health education counseling and giving medication list o list o or nothing but over the counter medication if there was a video consultation the doctor is authorized to give medication list a with this now the question is we discussed about identification what is the method of identification applied by the doctor please do understand any medicine practice guideline casts an obligation on the doctor to identify the patient for this purpose the doctor has to request for the patient to provide government photo id card it can be anything once the doctor is satisfied about the identification of the patient then only the telemedicine consultation should be done if the doctor is not sure about the identity of the patient doctor needs to abort the consultation if the id is adequate and the doctor is satisfied the consultation takes place at the same time the doctor also has to identify himself by his name by his registration number his degrees specialty and so more so this is the way the telemedicine practice guideline goes ahead there is no room for anonymous consultation both the parties need to identify each other for telemedicine practice guideline i'll repeat there is no scope for anonymous consultation either by the patient or by the doctor both the parties need to identify each other before the telemedicine consultation continues let's understand what are the medication that can be prescribed under first consultation list o list o can be prescribed by any method of or mode of teleconsultation audio video or else even the text messages list o is nothing but over the counter medication such as paracetamol oral rehydration solution that is ors cough syrup lozenges vitamins food supplement etc and one more important category has been added under the list o during any pandemic or in a public health emergency certain medications can be notified by the government they will fall under list o list a list a can be given during first consultation only through video consultation and these medicines are safe medicines with minimal abuse potential that is very very essential that means if possible there should not be any abuse potential those are considered as list a and they should be video consultation to prescribe list a now moving further what if the patient is seen only on telemedicine many times it may be 5 6 times let's understand let's understand whether it is first consultation or subsequent consultation is called as telefollow 
Let's discuss this. See, telemedicine practice guideline is very clear. It clearly says any number of times the patient consulted on telemedicine will be considered as first consult. For example, if the patient consults a doctor on 1st of August 2020 and the consultation is completed and the investigations are given, on 10th August, the patient comes back with the investigation. Again, the consultation takes place on 10th of August. Still, it is considered as first consult. On the 10th of August, the doctor has given medication and he has been called for follow-up after 10 days. That may be on 20th August. Again, the consultation on 20th August will be considered as first consult. Any number of consultation only on telemedicine will be considered as first consult. Please do remember this. To call it a telefollow-up consult, it is a mandatory requirement of in-person consultation with the doctor in the past six months. That is very, very essential. To conclude, dear friends, before a telemedicine consultation starts, identification of both the parties is very essential. Is the doctor and the patient need to identify each other. And in the first consultation, list O and list A can be given. To give list A medication, video consultation is mandatory. And one more point, I need to caution you, before you prescribe any medication, please do have a provisional diagnosis at least. If you are able to achieve the final diagnosis, is excellent. But at least provisional diagnosis has to be done. Thank you for your valuable time. Please do use telemedicine consultation for our patient who are in the remote area. Stay safe.